Hello, I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Yes, hello, Gogo. It has indeed been a while. But yes, so, today, we are continuing Art Nights. So, not a whole lot to be said on that. Um, so yes, Art Nights tonight. And I expect it will be Art Nights again on this upcoming Friday. Unfortunately, last Friday's stream uh, did not come to fruition. But we will... Yeah, this Friday, we should be seeing some more Art Nights. I can, I can say that in, with a reasonable amount of confidence. But yes, other than that, not much to be said. The Friday stream is expected to begin... Probably, probably around this same time, roughly 9 p.m. Central. Yeah, I was hoping to get this stream started a little bit earlier, but unfortunately I was not able to get everything settled beforehand. But yes, so as a result, we're probably not going to go for too, too long, or at least not go for my sort of target of two hours. That's typically what I like to shoot for, though. I don't think we've we've streamed for quite that long, for quite a while. But, you know, again, I'm still sort of getting used to streaming again. So, we'll get there. Let's see, what else is there to be said? Not much, really, I suppose. So. Yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> Nothing to be said. So let's get back right into things. No need for too much preamble. Yes, tonight we will be doing another Operator Spotlight. I do feel a little bit bad. I feel a little bit bad for having sort of glossed over and rushed through to some extent upon Cyrus's Operator Spotlight last time. I made the observation then, and it's still, still just as true that uh, it really is just her luck, isn't it? But yes. By way of, uh, I suppose, well, I don't know. I don't know what the word would be, but, but yeah, by way of apology, perhaps? That's the closest thing in my mind. I'm apologizing to the character more than anything, but uh, I will share one piece of trivia that I thought was fun that I didn't get the chance to share, is that uh, on Cyrus, her codename is Pon Cyrus, as you may have noticed, and uh, in Japanese, the term pon, as short for ponkotsu, is often used to describe someone or something that is unreliable or clumsy and the like. And so it's quite common to see people making that pun with uh, Pon Cyrus's name. But yes, I suspect, I don't know if that's necessarily the part of, yeah, I don't know that's a major reason for why she was given the specific code name that she was, but I wouldn't put it past them to have that be at least part of the reason. But yes, anyway, or at least to have that be a contributing factor to Pon Cyrus's general character. But anyway, I could talk about Pon Cyrus again, but I don't know, even with, again, having admittedly not gone into as great of detail as I had hoped initially, I don't know how much more detail I could go into without essentially retreading the same ground, and I'd like to keep some forward momentum on these. So, instead, we're going to discuss a different operator, one whom we've seen before. Yeah, I don't believe I've ever spoken of her in any great detail, but we have seen her, we have made use of her even, and without further ado, may I reintroduce you to Conqueror Cement. Not concrete. Concrete is what she wields and what she is an expert in, but no, her name is Cement. Her code name is Cement, I should say. Her name is Shayna Molman. But yes, she's a fun character. But yes, so her description is Defender Operator Cement hopes to become your first pick for construction subcontracting. So we've got sort of an unintentional construction worker theme going on. I didn't plan that out, but I do like it now that it is here. 
So yes, and her quote is, digging up the nutrients of the lands for distant prosperity, forging foundations for towering buildings. So yes, as mentioned before, and, you know, earlier this stream and in the past, her full name is Shayna Molman. So yeah, Cement is her code name. So yeah, she is the leader of a construction crew from Rimbilitan. I didn't write down the exact name of it, but it is named after her. I believe it is Shayna's Construction Crew or something to that effect. Very simple name. Very straightforward. But yes, she is based on a mole. You can see one in her artwork here. But yeah, as far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any specific mole that she is based on. But she is based on moles and perhaps indeed based in general. But yes, anyway. So yes, so she is a specialist in engineering work. But yeah, she is particularly skilled in laying concrete and various tasks related to mining. But yeah, Rimbilitan in general is a place where the mining industry is a major, yeah, is a major uh, element. But yeah, Rimbilitan is an interesting interesting place in in uh the Arknights lore and uh it's also the subject of a of a slight gaffe you see for a very long time i referred to it as rim bilton because i just didn't notice that there was an additional i in the name and i felt quite foolish when i discovered that yeah we'll probably talk about rim bilton later but yeah We'll talk about it later, I think. I think I'll... We would... we discuss it... Honestly, probably... Yeah, if I... Yeah. <laughs> Not quite as prepared as I could be. But yes. If I'm going to discuss Rimbilitan, probably we'd do that after we've s talked about more Rimbilitan operators, or perhaps done some story content that takes place in Rimbilitan. Yeah, I don't know if there is any off the top of my head. Sip. But, I'm sure that if there isn't any, there will be some in due time. But yeah, it's a notable place. For a number of reasons. But anyway, we're not here to talk about Rimbilitan. I just specifically said that. We're here to talk about Shayna Molman. But yes, she is, uh... Yes, quite skilled in engineering. Yeah, her skill is generally sort of practical. Things that she learned on the job. Yeah, she lacks theoretical knowledge, sort of more studied. Yeah, more studied knowledge. But because of her wealth of experience in the field, she is able to contribute nevertheless. And uh, is quite a major contributor for a number of Rhodes Island renovation projects. She is, of course, the owner of a company after all. Yes, yeah, she is a strong believer in workers' rights, insisting that she and her workers are able to review and revise blueprints without interference, and that her employers pay on time. Yeah, though she runs a relatively small business, a company with less than 50 employees, she enjoys good success. And this is also despite the fact that she doesn't back down when it comes to workplace safety, something that is, unfortunately, rather uncommon in Terra, as we've seen. But yes. Such stubbornness is noted in her files as being generally detrimental to businesses such as hers, but she and her crew are able to make it work because they are just very good at their jobs, basically. But yeah, they have an excellent, perfect track record for avoiding injuries, and their, their construction projects hold up to and exceed standards in all, uh, yeah, on all accounts in, yeah. I'm trying to think of a, of a way to phrase this. I've got my notes here, but I've tried to be a little bit less pros, prosaic with my notes and to be a little bit more just, you know, basic information to remind myself of what I need to be able to talk about here. Yeah, there are some parts still that are re written in such a way that I could read them out, and I did just do that, but... Again, I, try, I was sort of trying to avoid that so that I could just take notes faster. Didn't quite get there in a lot of cases. But yes. 
Anyway, as I was saying, so her, her team is generally quite skilled in their work. Yeah, this is in contrast to other workers from Rim Billiton, many of whom are employed solely for unskilled labor in so much as such a thing exists. But they are, you know, not given the education and skills necessary to really do their job particularly efficiently. They're just, you know, given a tool and told to work, essentially. But yes, uh, to the degree that a lot of Rim Billiton workers are indeed uh, illiterate. But yes, Shayna and her crew, however, are known for their exceeding, exceedingly high level of sort of skill and for keeping on top of, you know, technical, technical improvements, technological improvements, rather than, again, just sort of hitting things with pickaxes until they break. But yes, she is a generally nice, hopeful person. But yeah, she protects the rights of not only her, uh, you know, of, yeah, protects the rights of her infected workers as well, believing that they too, they too, uh, deserve respect, which again is an attitude that is unfortunately uncommon in the world of Ark Knights. But yes. She tempers her optimism with sort of an understanding that the world is, you know, kind of a troubled place. And no matter what she does, there's only, you know, she can do what she can, but she can't change that much about the world. But that doesn't mean that she shouldn't keep trying. But yes, another interest of hers is Columbia. Yeah, another region in Arknight that we've touched upon, but I don't think we've ever spoken of in any great detail. I think I might have mentioned some operators being from there, or other operators might have mentioned being there. Uh, Frostleaf is from Columbia, incidentally. But yes, uh, the reason that she is interested in Columbia, largely, is due to the fact that it is a major importer of uh, products from, or rather, raw materials, building materials, mined in, in Rim Billiton. Yeah, she's also interested in seeing sort of the differences between workers there compared to uh, Rim Billiton and other places. But yeah, as another bit of trivia about Shayna Molman, her sense of smell is extraordinarily acute uh, to, the to the degree that she is able to not only, you know, very easily identify different smells, but she is able to identify where different smells are coming from. But yeah, like she can walk into a room and smell something and within seconds, just sort of be able to tell where precisely in that room that thing is, which is pretty nifty. And it's also a trait that is that is found in certain moles. I decided to to look that up a little bit. It stood out to me as a detail that was it seemed a little bit too specific to be just sort of a character quirk of hers. It seemed like, yeah, it was a little bit too specific, a little bit in too much detail. So I decided to look that up a little bit, and I found that I found some an article, several articles actually, but I only read one. But yeah, talking about how a species of mole known as the common mole has stereoscopic smell, which is to say these the scent receptors in its nostrils operate independently, such that it is able to, in the same way that you can hear, you know hear a sound and be able to tell what angle it's coming from due to the difference in volume from one ear to the other. But yeah, the common mole is also able to determine where smells are coming from by the same, uh, the same mechanism, essentially. Yeah, which I found to be a neat touch. We're learning as we play the game. Sip, and not just of the game itself but of the, tr of the world around us. A beautiful thing, that. But yes, anyway. So, moving on to the gameplay portion of our overview here. But yeah, Cement is a defender, as you may have guessed from the fact that she has a big shield. Which is a trait not exclusive to defenders, I think, but it's most common among them. But yes. So, she is a defender, more specifically she is a duelist defender, which means that she, her archetype is limited in its blocking capacity. 
Ba, 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 ba. Hold on. I, okay. My hotkeys aren't quite working. That's weird. Anyway. So yeah, so she is a, like I was saying, she is a duelist defender. She can only block one enemy at a time. And, ah, okay. Now I see what the problem was. So yeah, she can only block one enemy at a time. And this is common among duelist defenders. It is the default state for them, essentially. Though certain duelist defenders, most duelist defenders from what I what I found, actually, uh, are able to block or have skills that allow them to block additional opponents or a temporarily. But yes. Shayna does not have that. Instead, she just focuses on Sort of, well, we've seen what she does in action to a certain extent. So, let's get into it. <clears throat> but yes. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Oh yeah, another quirk of Duelist Defenders is the fact that they only gain SP while they are currently blocking an enemy. So yes, they you really want to, or they are, you really want to make sure that they are blocking regularly to get the most out of their skill. Especially because they are quite expensive to field. So, you'd only really want to field them if you have a, a good idea for how you want to use them. But yes. So, her first skill... Ba -ba -ba -bum. But yes, her first skill is Stratum Groundbreaker. But yes, it is an auto-recovery manual activation skill. This is the one that we've seen on her before. But yeah, it is unlock... Or Unlocked immediately. I read ahead in my notes there a little bit. But yes, it is a auto recovery manual activation skill that uh, deals physical damage to all enemies within a certain range. Yeah, it deals a yeah it deals uh 150 percent of her attack damage up to 280 percent at max level. The initial charge is three skill points up to or is zero skill points up to three and requires 9 skill points, down to 6, and it can store up to 2 charges at a time. But yeah, again, the very short, very short uh, cooldown, or not cooldown, but the very short charging period for her skill makes it seem, at a glance, like it's something that you can use basically constantly. But again, you don't get, you don't get it recharged except when she is, when she is blocking. So again, you do need to be somewhat more aggressive with her positioning. But yes, it only has a short range. It has only sort of the tile that she is on and then the next one in front of it. Like so. You need to be a little bit more dynamic in these. Didn't want to leave you staring at a static image for too, too long. Experimenting a little bit here and there, so I'd really appreciate any feedback you could give. But yes, so she attacks the square that she is on and then the square that she is facing. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, there's no strict limit to the number of targets that she can hit at once, which makes her interesting because, again, duelists are known for being able to deal with a single target. But this allows her to have a tool to take out large numbers of enemies at a time, in theory. But yes, so her second skill is structural support, and this one is quite interesting. But yes, it is a auto automatic recovery manual activation skill as well, and when used, it apply it gives her stacks of a defense increasing buff on activation. Yeah, it gives her a buff for 60 seconds. But yeah, you gain 13 stacks, and each stack decreases her decreases the, or let me take that again. Yes, yeah, so you gain 13 stacks up to 20 at max level. Each stack increases her defense by 10% to 20% or 21% for a total of 130% defense up to 420%. Yes, yeah, so the skill can be manually deactivated and she loses one stack of the, of the buff every time she takes damage. But yeah, so it's good for dealing with periods of high damage, and the ability to cancel the skill means that you can, you know, once that time is over, you can immediately get rid of the buff and start charging up your next one. 
which is quite useful. But yeah, given that she loses a stack and thus loses part of her defense buff every time she takes damage, she is best used, or I would assume, I would assume, I haven't used it in this, in this capacity yet, but her skill, I would assume, is most effective against enemies that do a lot of damage per hit, but don't hit frequently, you know. Sip. But yes. So, her talent is Blueprint Corrections, unlocked at Elite 1. But yes, it grants physical damage reduction, which doubles after having been deployed for 35 seconds. And so keep in mind that this isn't defense, this is a straight percentage reduction to the amount of physical damage that she takes. Whereas, <clears throat> whereas defense is subtracted from the damage that she takes. But yes, the damage reduction starts at 6%, it improves to 12% at Elite 2, and improves by a further 3% at Potential 4. But yes, again, it doubles afterwards, so at Potential 4, Elite 2, after having doubled, it will be 30% damage reduction, which is quite sizable. Quite sizable. But yes, she also has a module that is available. But yes, Engineering Recorder. I'm realizing now I should have also fetched the art for that because the, the modules, each character that has a unique module, and some of them have modules but not unique ones, but every character who has a unique module also has unique art for theirs. But yeah, I alluded to it before, but I never explicitly stated it, that the first level of each module is sort of generic. Usually each, each uh, subclass has two modules and you will either get one or two variants of the module and you will either get one or the other some characters having access to two i believe that's most common among six stars from what i've seen i haven't looked into it extensively but yes i believe it is most common among six stars and possibly only found among six stars and possibly found among all six stars that have modules who knows We'll find out, I suppose. Another thing to improve upon later. But yes. So, at base level, the module grants the ability to recover SP while not blocking, though unfortunately only about 20% of normal speed. Again, you gain one skill point every second by default. So, you'll be getting one every five seconds with that. Which is not great. But... Again, the SP cost of her first skill is not too, too high. And I just realized I forgot to take note of the SP cost of the second skill, which is unfortunate, but... Anna, yeah, no, this isn't explicitly a guide, so we're just going to move on. If you'd like additional information, you can, of course, search it out. I believe I've mentioned it before, but all of my information is sourced from the arknights.wiki.gg. The Arknights Tarot Wiki. But yes, that is also where I source most of my images. But yeah, any image that is just character art, I source from there. Images that are involve gameplay and backgrounds and whatnot, I take I take screenshots of myself. But yes. So anyway, back to the module. But yes. The second level improves blueprint corrections up to 14%. Yes, and then the third improves it up to 16%, and that is, again, before applying the doubling and before applying the potential bonus. So, with all of that, so yeah, that would be, yeah, 19 with the potential bonus and uh, third level of her module. Yeah, so 19 which when doubled would be 48% damage reduction, which is very sizable indeed. But yes, so anyway, the men's kit gives her the potential to deal quite a bit of damage to multiple targets or to take very little damage from a few, making her a versatile pick. Again, you do have to choose that before you start the mission, but you can fit her into either role depending on the mission. Yes, given the Stratum Groundbreaker's low SP cost, I feel like pairing her with Liskarm, who I definitely, we've, I mean, I've definitely talked about Liskarm before, I know that much, but I don't remember if we've ever used Liskarm. 
I've deliberately avoided using Liskarm to a certain extent because, again, she was a... This I'm confident I've mentioned before. She was a unit that I relied upon very heavily in my casual play. And I decided I wanted to try things a little bit different. But yes, anyway. So, Liskarm... Yeah, the reason that I mentioned Liskarm specifically is because she has a skill that allows her, when she is struck, to grant one SP to a unit in the four orthogonal tiles around her. So that would be, you know, if Liskarm... Whoops. Oh dear. Oh dear. Alright, I've gotten out of my notes, but I guess there's not all that much to say from them. I was wrapping up anyway. But yes, so Liskarm is here. The tiles here, 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 and here are the ones orthogonal to her. But yeah, so, you know, Liskarm here, Chain of Molman here, and yeah, if there's no other units in the in these other four tiles, or no other allied units, enemy units don't use skill points, I don't think, so you don't need to worry about that, but anyway, if there's no other allied units in those four tiles, then every time Liskarm get every time Liskarm procs that skill, she'll be granting a skill point to to uh I always want to call her Shayna. I always want to call her Shayna Molman. I guess largely because the name is very funny to me, but also I don't know. I just like it. But yes, anyway. Cement is her name. There we go. Her code name. But yes. So if Cement is the only unit orthogonally uh adjacent to Liskarm, then Liskarm will always give the skill point to, again, Cement. Cement. I need to use that name for the sake of avoiding confusion. But yes, Cement. And that will charge up Cement skill quite quickly. Anyway, so, back to things. It is time for the customary fashion review. Bum. Get this out of the way. I guess, actually, let's just erase it rather than put it away because I might want to do some more drawing. Anyway, so, her general look <clears throat> is sort of a very, very stylized construction type uniform, I suppose. But yes, you've got the mining helmet with the lights on it, which is nice. <clears throat> yeah, not too long ago, which is to say last year, um, I went to, into a cave, and I also had a... I didn't have a helmet, but I did have head-mounted lights, and they were quite nice to have. But yes. Anyway. So. I like the... I like the coat. It's a little bit... It's weird. It's kind of oddly short. But I do like it for what it is. But yes. The... Transparent... I don't know what... It doesn't feel quite appropriate to refer to it as a skirt, because it doesn't really seem to be that. It's the highest waisted skirt I've ever seen, if it's a skirt, but... But yes, the transparent edifice here is not uncommon among Arknight's character designs. But yes, I like the, I like the shoes. I like that they're very large, and I like that they are very spiky also. But yes, if you notice on the shield here, that is a 500 kilogram cement block, which hold on, I think I did do the, I did do the math converting that into uh, Imperial units, uh, but I didn't, I didn't read that properly because I read it as 50 kilograms. So that is a 500 kilogram cement block, uh, which is one, about one, 1,100 pounds. So, uh, that's quite the shield, isn't it? <laughs> quite the shield. Anyway, so. My brief amazement aside, let's get back to the character. So, yeah. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but Chaina is not infected, also. Not relevant to her design, but... Anyway. So yeah, I generally like the outfit. I like the colors on it. I like the the balance of it. I like the drill of it. But yeah, I I like uh I like that it's not sort of a the sort of traditional drill look 
It's more of a modern, modern, boring drill. Boring in the sense of to bore a tunnel, not in the sense of to be uninteresting. But yes, I like that. I like the little mole fellow, as of course, as well. Especially the sunglasses. Yeah, it's a decently practical look. The shoes are a little bit big to be too practical. I feel like if this, uh, if she, if we wanted to be a little bit more realistic, we could maybe give her some pants or something. And of course, she also has a lot of sort of dangling elements for operating a power tool. But yes. Anyway, looking now at her elite, whoops, that's not it, at her elite two art. Yeah, the outfit is much the same, just with some elements having been removed, or it looks more like they're kind of falling off than anything, but, but yeah, her helmet removed, her uh, tape measure removed. I also noticed that the, it looked, hmm, yeah, like the, uh, these buckles, some of these or these belts or something are missing from her arms, which is an interesting note. Given the other changes, I would I'm inclined to assume that that is intentional, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, one thing I, I particularly like about the scene in this image is the is the mole logo here. <clears throat> but yeah, in general, I do like this this whole sort of scene, this like image that resembles her sort of bursting out of the ground almost, or out of the background into a brighter tomorrow, perhaps. But yes, it's a nice, it's a nice look. You've got these sort of towering construction, construction structures, and you've got the, uh, the drills and whatnot. I like the sort of balance of the, of the drill on this side and the bigger drill on the other side. But yeah, another, another thing that is noted in her files <clears throat> that I thought was interesting is that, uh, yeah, like we, like we were talking about with her shield, uh, it is quite heavy. It is noted to be quite heavy as we have, uh, just learned <laughs> being over a ton or hold on. Is it a ton? 1000 pounds or is it 2000 pounds? Oh dear. I just realized I don't remember. It's a lot. It's heavy. <laughs> it's a heavy shield, heavier than a shield that I would carry. But yes, anyway, so it's noted to be quite heavy, and it is the way that it is described, the the thing that people makes people realize that Shayna is quite strong despite her slight build, is the fact that Gaviel uh, is struggled to lift it, requiring two hands to do so. Which, granted, the fact that she can lift a a one thousand one hundred pound shield with two hands is pretty impressive to me. Much better than I could do. But yes. Gaviel is an interesting sort of character, not to derail this too much, in that she's sort of used as kind of a benchmark for strength in Ark Knights. She's not, you know, the strongest character, clearly, but both in terms of combat effectiveness and in terms of just raw lifting power or whatnot. But basically, if we ever need a character and we need to sort of establish that that character is strong. Usually we sort of compare them to Gaviel. Yeah, there's other characters whose lore involves that or whose files mention, you know, them challenging Gaviel to some sort of competition or mentioning sort of uh, that they respect Gaviel's strength or whatnot. Yes. Again, she is not the strongest, but she is sort of archetypical of strength in Ark Knights if that makes any sense. And so yes. So, as you had caught a slight glimpse of, Cement also has an additional skin. This one is not available in English as of this point, um, or not available in the global server as of this point, as far as I'm aware. If it is, then the description on, uh, the, w on the wiki needs to be updated. But yeah, there's a description. It's just in Chinese and I can't read Chinese very well, if at all. I don't know why I said if at all. I definitely can't. <laughs> but yes, I definitely can't read Chinese. But what I can do is machine translate it. 
I won't read out the whole machine translated uh, description because I don't feel super confident in it necessarily. I'm sure it's accurate enough and I am going to talk about it, but you know, I am not going to read it out as if it were sort of something that you know, was an official uh, document. That's it. But yeah, given the translation I did, and I did use two services, I used Google Translate and DeepL. But yeah, I was able to sort of deduce that this is, yeah, this sort of scene depicted in this, in this image is a scene of uh, Shayna's first trip out of Rimbilitan. So yeah, this is a casual outfit of hers, it is said. But yeah, the it's definitely a more casual look, for sure. It definitely looks less construction-y. It does still have sort of the the elements that we that we've come to love, the sort of orange and black color scheme. But yeah, I like this different design for a shield. It reminds me a little bit of a of a screen door or something, though. I guess that's probably meant to be maybe, well, yeah, I was going to say chain link, but that's, I don't think that's quite accurate. It's hard to tell precisely at the resolution that we have available to us, but yeah, all of that is to say that it's almost certainly not meant to be a screen door. There's other operators who have shields that are explicitly doors, uh, but I don't think this is one. Looking at it a little bit closer now, the sort of the uh, electricity symbols here here and the what appears to be a power plug there would seem to imply to me that it is something electrical but I wouldn't know what that would be necessarily I can't think of any electrical appliance that is quite this large or in quite this shape or with quite these spikes but yes, her weapon's also quite different here. I'm not super familiar with power tools of any kind, whether they be, you know, for home use or for construction use. But given what I was able to deduce from just looking at this and some additional research I did, I believe that might be sort of a manual portable uh, pile driver or something to that effect. But yes. I like the shoes. I do like the shoe design. They're a little bit... The point to them is a little bit odd to me. I do... I do like her big shoes better, though. I do like her big shoes better. They're kind of silly looking, and I, and I like that. Yes, also of note is this little drone here. Apparently, it is described differently in the two translated sources I used. Uh, and one, it is described as being a probing drone, and the other, is just, it is described as being a, a detection drone. Either way, reference is made to it being used in the mines to illuminate things. So, presumably that is its purpose, even if we don't know too precisely what uh, other things it does. But yes, the description, as translated, also suggests that this is... Uh, yeah, this is sort of the outfit, her main outfit that she uses when she's traveling outside of Rim Billiton for, uh, to work as a construction consultant. That's it. Also of note is that I like her little car. <laughs> yes, it's, it's quite small looking, given that Shayna is quite small herself. Um, but I like it. It's very cute. Anyway... So overall, I do, my fondness for the helmet and for the shoes do incline me a little bit more to her base and by extension her Elite 2 art. But I do like the casual look of the, of the, of the uh, outfit outfit. Yeah, again, I don't know that I would say that I like it enough to call that my favorite. It's definitely a hard, hard race. The idea of her fighting with a pile driver is also funny to me. So I think that's another point in favor of the of her outfit outfit. 
uh, which is called New Business. I don't know if that's a translated name or if we just happen to, it just happened to have a English name attached to it. Sometimes they do the the skins that aren't on the global. Sometimes the 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 skin names do get changed when they are ported to global, though. So again, I wouldn't be super 100% confident of anything that I've said here, basically. But yeah, the I don't expect you know a whole lot of differences necessarily. Just the whatever translation we get officially will presumably be more coherent and sensible and a little bit better written. But uh, one thing I, I also enjoyed noticing was the fact that uh, when I translated her name, it, it always sort of, it translated very directly. Or when uh, when her name appeared in the translation, Shana Molman. But yeah, the, the Chinese, the translation from Chinese that the uh, services gave me was Shana Muiman. So presumably that is an effort to sort of to replicate phonetically the pronunciation of Mole Men. But yes, might be Mole Man, but I don't know, Mole Men sounds better to me. So yeah, again, it is a very close race, but I do think, I do think in the end, I will give it to New Business. Yeah, as my favorite. I like the art of the Elite 2. It's very dynamic, very balanced, and very interesting. And of course, the standard art is classic. But yeah, I do like, I like the helmet and I like the shoes. Those are probably my favorite parts of any of these designs. But yeah, I think I've got to give it to new business. Well, yes, as always, if you have any thoughts you would like to share, I would be delighted to hear them as well. But, one way or the other, let's play the video game, huh? <laughs> Alright, so, not going to have too, too much time here, but we should have at least enough time to get started in attempting this level. A little bit concerned. We've had uh, we had a good deal of struggle with the last boss level. The recommended level hasn't increased that much, so it's probably not going to be that much harder on that basis. But you know, anything could happen. Anyway, speaking of cement, cement, she's here. I used her when I uh, actually managed to clear S four two previously off stream. But yeah, I don't know that I'm going to keep her on the team right now. I think I might swap her out real quick. But yeah, again, if we use her, I'm going to level her up, but I don't know that she's going to be the choice as of right now. But yeah, another thing that I noticed sort of looking into uh, as I was sort of uh, messing around a little bit with different uh, ideas, is I noticed that Durnar actually has quite low defense compared to some of our other defenders. But yeah, I would assume that that is sort of emblematic of uh, emblematic of the uh, Arch Defender, but uh, one way or the other, it explains a lot of the survivability issues that I've had with Durnar. So that's something I would have to keep in mind if I wanted to use her in other stages. I can't just use her as a defender. I have to use her as a defender, keeping in mind the fact that she won't be as able to resist attacks as others. That being said, she does have quite a bit of attack herself compared to a lot of them. But yeah, Blitz also has quite a high attack, though I guess that comes from the fact that he's so high level. But yeah, the closest in level would be yeah, Korra, Fire Whistle, Liskarm, and yeah, she absolutely... Well, no, I guess Fire Whistle also has quite a high attack. Well, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, all that is to say that I can't simply place down Durnar and expect her to not be moved uh, in the same way that I could with, say, Gummy. Gummy, of course, also has the added benefit of the fact that she is able to stun. 
Yeah, she's able to stun enemies and thus reduce the damage that they do and heal herself. Having mentioned Fire Whistle, I kind of want to use Fire Whistle. I believe... I believe we might have used Fire Whistle before. But, I don't know. She's been fun to use in my experience. So, let's use Fire Whistle. Fire Whistle at your service. Indeed. <clears throat> this place is filled with fallen reunion. The blood from his wounds had been frozen, but his other body parts remained intact. This is Frostleaf's technique. Those runes over there look like they were caused by explosives. It's probably meteorites work. Frostleaf, Jessica, meteorite. I'm sure they're all still alive. Amia, all the rescue squads have reached Rhodes Island. We've extracted all the recon squads except for meteorites. No operators were lost on this mission, but everyone suffered, suffered frostbite with varying degrees of severity. You must take note of this. Frostbite? All our recon squads observed a special group of Reunion troops wandering around the city. Unlike the reckless Reunion soldiers we're used to fighting, these, numbers, these members had a special way of fighting. Be cautious. I... I understand. Dr. Tiber, am I clear? I understand. Very well, then. I also have some things to do. Amia, even if Dr. Tiber is very helpful, you can't rely too much on a single person. Also, mind the rings. I know. <laughs> Dr. Calcite actually worries about you a lot. Before we realized that, Nature's beasts have bared their fangs. Well, uh, our retreat has been cut off, apparently. Mm. They will do everything they can to keep us from getting away. But we didn't come here to run away. Rhodes Island will break through their ranks. We're going to rescue Meteorite Squad. Project Red, do you copy? Ah, yes. That's right. I'll meet you at the slum's east entrance. Mm-hmm. It'll be just the two of us. We'll be fine. Just the two of us are more than enough to fight against Reunion. Quite a bit of confidence there. All right. Please so. Hmm. Hmm. So we've got issues. We've got slugs, more specifically. So I definitely, what are we going to do here? They're not immediately aggressive, though I'm sure they'll probably want to go for those spaces soon-ish. Yes. Hello there. Oh. Yes, hello there, Opaque. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hmm. I'm a little bit reluctant to deploy anything too, too close or too, too quickly. But we definitely need something. We definitely need some damage on these slugs. Yes, we do actually have... Okay, so spaced as they are, they're not too much of a big deal. Yeah, first playthrough sounds like it's going to be fun. Indeed, it has been fun so far. So yes, I'm a little bit worried about these slugs up on the top. And we're going to need to heal. Yeah, like I was saying, I'm a little bit worried about those slugs up in the top corner there. I'm a little bit worried that they might inflict some damage. Mm, this is bad. I'm definitely confident that these slugs are going to be a problem. Hmm, actually, I should have placed I should have placed her to the left. Yeah, play a new playthrough with using the new ops. That's so much work. Fair enough. Okay, so yeah, we should have dealt with those a little bit sooner, it looks like, and our defenses are going to fail. But, such is the way of things. Um, 
Well, we've got just enough for Fire Whistle, so now we can get to uh, see her. Hmm. Ah, right. She was focusing on the drone. Um, so yeah, so our defense has failed us somewhat. So yeah, so I should have been a little bit more aggressive with taking out these slugs. Um, I don't think... I mean, I guess Amia can sort of... No, okay. I was going to say she can take out the drone, but that's only if she focuses it. Uh, we're done. Yes, I take it you've been playing the game for a, a fair while, okay? Yes, I've actually been playing this game very casually, basically just grinding for resources, actually, since about the time that it released. Yeah, I played it since it came out. But yeah, this game was came out at an interesting time for me. It was before I started streaming, but it was sort of around the time that I, like, started thinking about streaming. And I, when I first started streaming, I sort of had the thought in my head that I wanted to play games that, uh, I wanted to prioritize playing games that I hadn't played before. So I refrained from doing the story all these years. Sit. Yeah, I refrained from doing the story all these years. So yes. Given what we now know of the tactical situation, we're going to want to get rid of these slugs up here sooner rather than later. And I see no one better for that task than uh, Meteorite. And I've positioned Pon Cyrus in a slightly awkward uh, angle, but it is what it is. Hmm, this was probably a bad idea also. <laughs> Again, we have established before that we have established before that uh, using Texas and Ponsiris's second skills simultaneously is probably not the most optimal. We could start putting a little bit of damage on them with Manticore. She might take a little bit of damage though, and I don't really want that. I wonder. I am curious now, actually. I think I've seen Manticore dodge their explosions before. So if she could do that, that would be pretty nifty. No problem. Mm, I don't... Oh, I have forgotten to use a medic again. Yeah, operators naturally prioritize enemies with the closest path to the blue box. Ah, I wasn't aware of that, actually. Okay, so those are all dealt with. Manticore's a little bit low on health, but she's doing okay. We want to use a sniper. Okay, well... That was short-lived. Um, what happened, actually? Hmm. Okay, we're surviving. We are surviving. Did... Oh, actually, did Jessica get shot by a drone, maybe? Ah, ah, we don't have any within range. Oh, no. It, yes, we do. Okay. This is bad, but we should be able to salvage this. Okay, there we go. Yes, explosive slugs do a lot of damage. I am... <laughs> I am well aware. I am well aware. But yes, um... Yes, we have lost more than a few rounds due to the slugs. Okay. That's going to take out our medic, and it's going to take out meteor. Oh no! Okay, meteorite is not quite within range to be taken out. Of course, now we do need to get her healed. Uh, fortunately, their explosion range isn't too big. Yeah, that's something I also learned just now. This is a Bad position for Amya because she can't provide too much support here. And yeah, she's within explosion range also. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I think if we're wanting to deal with these slugs, we're going to need to be able to deal with them a little bit further away. Hmm. 
Hmm. So yes, let's take this plan to the drawing board. So taking out the slugs up in the top here is a high priority because those are the ones who are going to start moving first. The ones over here can be de dealt with a little bit later. Manticore did survive their explosions because they only have a one, one tile range as far as I can tell. So she didn't take too, too much damage and probably she was able to, uh, probably able to dodge at least one of the explosions. Yeah, there's a way to have your artillery man uh, prioritize the sniper, the spiders first. I was actually getting at that. I had chosen a uh, fire whistle basically just arbitrarily. Yeah, I had chosen fire whistle almost completely arbitrarily. Just sort of, I just saw her and I thought, oh, I haven't used fire whistle in a while. Um, but yes, I could, I could position fire whistle to deal with them. Good position fire whistle to deal with them. Yeah, let's, what's the range on Fire Whistle again? So, it extends one up and one down from wherever direction, or, you know. So she wouldn't be able to target, say, if I were to position her, like, here. She wouldn't be able to hit the slugs up here. But yes. Hmm. So yeah, I think doing something similar to what we were doing think outside the box yeah um something somewhat similar is probably decent though actually now that i think about it we might hmm yeah we might actually want to position it might be good to position well hold on hmm okay so one thing that we need to keep in mind is that later into the mission, we're going to start seeing a lot of slugs. We could use, uh, we could use Snow Sant again, but I don't know that she has the capacity to deal with quite that many. But yeah, so we're going to want to be able to take them out while they're further away. Say I see a way to complete the stage with your current team. I definitely think it's possible. I think we need to place a little bit more emphasis on range, probably. But yeah, I definitely think it's possible. I suppose let's take this opportunity to gather a little bit more information. So yeah, so once again, the slugs are where they are. Using Frostleaf, actually, I could probably... Hmm, actually, actually. I think I... Yeah, I almost certainly was a little bit too attached to the sort of defensive line of just, you know, two units side by side. That's, you know, almost certainly not something that's strictly necessary or all that beneficial. Well, now that I, I say that, but now, uh, <laughs> hmm. Now we don't have a convenient place that we can... But, well, I guess we can still put a medic thusly. And we might want to do that sooner rather than later. But yes. Um, ah, we have let an enemy slip through, but... My first thought was positioning Frostly thusly to deal with enemies there. Um... My second, um, hmm, are we, yeah, we don't quite have the blocking I would like, um, this is less than ideal. Again, I probably would want a more standard charge skill, hmm, especially now that we're getting the drones. Okay, this is bad. Okay, I've let things, uh... Let things get out of, a bit out of hand. Don't be afraid, so uh, we're probably going to lose all of our defensive units when the slugs start exploding. Um, oh, mm -hmm. Jessica. Nice Jessica doesn't quite have the range to deal with that second se uh, second group of slugs. 
Okay, seeing what is happening to Jessica, I'm confident now that she was just taken out by a drone. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what had happened last time. Hmm. Alright. All this is definitely not... Oh, that's not going to work, I don't think. We don't have the damage. No. Um, I don't know. Maybe? No. Okay. So yeah, not enough quite... Not quite enough speed out of uh, Meteorite. But yeah, I definitely need to deal with those slugs faster. So I need to get a little bit less caught up in all that was going on. Let me... Hmm. What's the range on Jessica again? Not quite enough to deal with that second group of slugs. But yes, do believe after in establishing the initial front line, you should deal with the top left spiders before they move. Definitely, definitely. I definitely think I should switch back to a normal, just like charge gamma on either Texas or Ponsiris. I don't think having them. Yeah, I don't think them having. Uh, shall I give a larger hint? Not quite yet, I don't think. But yes, thank you for asking, though. But yes, I do appreciate hints, but I don't, you know, want them all the time. Um, this. I'm hesitating too much. Um, meteorite. Um, nope. Okay. Hibiscus, please. This might not be quite enough damage, but it might be just enough damage, actually. Nope. Okay. Right. I need to position her a little bit away. So actually, I could use her thusly. Oh, well. Hmm. Okay. That went uh better than I expected. Um no I can't hit them. Ah, right, that's why I placed uh Okay, that's good. Right, that's why I placed uh meteorite where she was previously. Jessica here and place a defender beside her. That uh didn't go quite so well. But yeah, Scummy will draw in enemy fire. I could maybe, if I was a little bit more thoughtful about how I used Manticore, I might have been able to deploy her in such a way. Hmm, how do we want to swing this? If we place Frostleaf back there, she will die. Bomb rush incoming, yeah. Um, we need to block. We do need to block. We definitely need to block. I suppose there's not much to be said about it other than that. This is definitely uh, a desperation move, and it's not a very good strategy, so... Okay, she can survive, you know, a slug explosion. I'm not confident that Ponsiris will. Oh, she can actually survive too. Hmm. This is not great. Hmm. The ones on the side there are worrying to me. The top right. Okay, Frostleaf did not come out of that quite as well as I had hoped. Um, that also didn't go so well. I probably could have deployed another medic. Jessica has gone down, and now we don't have anyone to deal with the drone. Hmm. Yeah, part of me was kind of hoping, I don't know why I thought it might work that way, but I was hoping that I could maybe get a sword rate in charge quickly enough that the uh, drone would uh, die. Hmm? Alright. So things didn't go quite as bad as they could have, but they also didn't go well. We only lost one, but we don't have a solid defensive line right now. And yeah, Pon Cyrus does not... Oh? Well, maybe. I was going to say, Pon Cyrus doesn't have enough defense to hold up two enemies. 
but she definitely doesn't have enough defense to hold up the slugs. Um, so yeah, we need defenders here. Come on, get it together. Hmm. Yeah, we've lost, unfortunately. I definitely can't take them out fast enough. I'm fine. Get it together, everyone. Yes, we'll mention that Pon Cyrus has better defense than most defenders. Yeah, I did notice that. I did notice that her defense was quite high. Yeah. And uh, especially with the defense skill. But yeah, again, after having talked about it a whole lot, I think now we're going to... Well, I don't know, because it's not that many... It's not that many more deployment points now that I think about it. I guess Sword Rain is fine. I was thinking... Actually, hold on. Sword Rain actually takes fewer skill points to charge than uh, charge Gamma. I thought it was uh, I thought it was more for some reason. Lab operators, yes, you do. You do see them. But yeah, the uh, the Monster Hunter collab was the main reason that I actually started this playthrough. I wanted to absolutely make sure, because you know I'd sort of been sort of been uh, procrastinating on it a little bit, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I did the the Monster Hunter collab on stream. So that was sort of the the first impetus that I had to really start moving in the direction of actually playing the game on stream. But yes, so despite making a lot of compromises there, we did actually do pretty well. And having seen, uh, yeah, having seen Fire Whistle actually survive some damage from these uh, slugs, I'm feeling confident. But yeah, I feel that we could probably position her in a way that she can start taking out some of these slugs. Because, yeah, I guess the main thing, the main thing, is that we, uh, if she survives, yeah, she survives long enough to live too. Yep. But yes, the main thing is that we want to... Let me, let me, uh, take a moment to gather my thoughts. I was sort of thinking about this in terms of me wanting to get rid of every slug. And that, you know, ideally we need to do that at some point so as to actually beat the mission. But um, we don't necessarily need to eliminate all of them all at once. So if, you know, some of them survive, then so be it for a little while. Or even if some of them survive long enough to explode. But yeah, another thing that we're going to want to do, I think, is I've been a little bit reluctant to deploy a lot of medics because I was kind of expecting them to explode. But we could probably make them not explode if we're careful. Yeah, there's a part of me that still wants to face Fire Whistle backwards, but I don't think that's necessarily going to be a good choice. I think it'd probably be better to face her forwards because that will, you know, more slugs will be coming from that way as we move into the mission. I think I'm going to make some more adjustments to our skills. I don't do that super often. Oh, right. I forgot I hadn't promoted Manticore at any point. Um, Gummy is fine. Jessica is fine. Also, I'm confident. Well, the dodge chance would actually be... That could be clutch. I don't want to rely on a... Well, it's a 75% chance, so... Yeah, if she gets exploded on by two slugs, statistically speaking, she'll probably dodge at least one of them. That might be good, honestly. Just give your orders and I'll carry them out. But yes. Hibiscus is fine. There's nothing we can do about her. Gaviel. Gaviel actually... Being able to heal or give all an allies a buff is probably pretty good. Leave the rear to me. Go show them what you're made of. Yes, fire whistle causes burn with scorched earth or yeah, it causes extra damage, burns enemies. Um hmm. I feel like scorched earth is better than wildfire for our applications. Estesia and get, mm, yeah, I think, yeah, Astral Sword is just better than Astral, Astral Protection for our purposes, I think. 
on Cyrus as fine as she is. We want that defense on her so that she can tank. Honestly, with that defense, she's like probably one of our better tanks on the team currently. Yeah, she might actually be a good choice to... Uh, well, she definitely wouldn't be a good choice to fight the slugs initially because she doesn't have the base defense. But yeah, with the skill active and with the extra HP, uh, if she stays on the field long enough, that would definitely be ideal. But yes, I don't see any other... Huh, I guess Amia. I've not found a lot of good use for Spirit Burst, but I also haven't really had the opportunity to use it much. I don't think we'd have a good opportunity to use it on this level, at any rate. I won't let you down. But yeah. Speaking of operators that I've used a fair amount before, Tadafons with her long range. Yeah, her skill is much better when she's Elite 2. Gotcha. Or her second skill is much better when she's Elite 2. Okay. Yes, that will be a little bit from now, though. But yeah, so Tadafons could also be useful, what, what with her long range, and her wide range in particular. Um, that would help us to deal with some of the distant slugs. I don't know if I want to swap her in immediately, though. I think I want to work this a little bit further. But yeah, more healing is definitely good and we might even want to think about might even want to think about swapping uh philopsis or someone back into the team yeah tadafon's strat or oh yeah her trait makes her target heavy enemies first yep yeah so when there are things other than slugs on the field she wouldn't be quite as uh effective at destroying the slugs but up until that point. point yeah, sword. Hmm. Okay, with... Yeah, uh, I should pause while I'm thinking about this. Um... Hmm. Yeah, with Fire Whistle there, we wouldn't have enough range to cover the slugs, as I was thinking of. So that's not quite what uh, we need to do there. We could still put Fire Whistle in front. And rely on the fact that she can take some slug explosions to take a little bit of heat for now. Um, I do... No, this is fine. This is fine. Positioning her where we had her before is fine, I think. Cut them to pieces. Yes, I do definitely want... You want a medic sooner rather than later, I think. That much is, is uh, for sure. Yeah. Positioning Fire Whistle... Actually, I guess we can just wait a second, basically. Um, hmm. Okay, we might need the second medic sooner than I was anticipating. I was going to say, did those slugs take damage from the other slugs exploding? But no, they took damage from... Uh... Hmm, this is... Good. <laughs> this is goodbye. Right, I forgot those slugs started moving then and there. Well, uh, there goes our one sniper. Um, this is probably a bad time to pos to start using Manticore, but she's got a good amount of dodge, so you know whatever. Um, Amia, please. Uh, help me mop up my mistakes when it comes to these drones. But yeah, I should have waited on Jessica just a second. Yeah, Manticore does not want to be around when the casters are. Yeah, I did, I, you know, I knew that much. I knew that wasn't a good choice, but I felt like it was the best suboptimal option available to us. This is probably not going to go great for us, but it might go well enough to work. Yes, we need good healing. That is... Yeah, that's not going to give her a buff, per se. Um, we can probably remove Texas. Could deploy her during the bomb rush and get better results. Uh, Jessica? Or... Hmm. 
I'm realizing now that this is... No, I was gonna... This is fine. Um, Matthew, okay. You know what? That's a good point. That's a good point. We did lose our... Oh dear, we've lost both our medics at this point. We've lost every unit that can heal. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Jessica's not going to survive the drones, but you know who can? Frostleaf. Um, so this, uh, we're almost certainly not going to win at this point, but we can try. Um, Should have gone a little bit sooner. Good dodge, good dodge. Does Manticore only... Ah! Oh no. I was going to say... Yeah, no, she does dodge all kinds of attacks. I was thinking for a moment that maybe she only dodged physical attacks, but no, I'm probably thinking of other characters. So yes, Jessica is going to die to that slug, but it's okay. It's not good, but it's, it is what it is. I could have retreated units and survived a little bit longer with some of them, but again, I don't expect to actually win this. Um, we did, you know, a respectable, respectable showing there. I'm dead on my feet, but it's not time to quit yet. Yeah, you want Meteorite to be around this time, ideally. Okay, okay. Yeah, I guess another, another sort of trap that I tend to fall into with my strategies is I tend to, like, concentrate all of my units in one place. Yeah, retreating your operators before they get killed for a DP refund. But yeah, that's something that I think of, but I don't think of until they've already been defeated. I, yeah, I don't uh, tend to... Yeah, I just... Let me get back to what I was saying. So I tend to sort of, as an extension of that, I suppose... I tend to sort of tunnel vision, tend to think of, okay, I need to establish one very solid point and defend it with everything that I can. And sort of, you know, I tend to bunch up all of my defenders and snipers and whatever else in that area, making a very solid choke point. And uh, so, yeah, so I don't tend to think about, or I tend to think of in terms of I need to establish this one solid choke point as soon as I can. So I don't tend to think about deploying operators during different phases of the mission. I just think, okay, I just want everyone in place as soon as possible. So I have, everything is correct and I don't need to like make any more adjustments. But that's definitely not like the ideal way to play necessarily. Or, at the very least, it's not, uh... <clears throat> applying the same strategy to everything is a bad idea in one... Yeah, in one way or the other. That's it. But yeah, again, I was sort of thinking about retreating a little bit more, but... That's not something that I usually think of, because I usually... Usually the idea of an operator getting defeated is tantamount to failing the mission in my mind. Because, again, I just sort of tend to focus on the specific strategy of everything needs to be in place, correct, no one dies, everything, you know, goes exactly as planned. Yeah, from playing the game for a long time, the game really punishes you for using the same simple strategy over and over. Yeah. Again, that's definitely, definitely something that I've been learning from this playthrough. Because, again, like, though I've been playing the game for years, I do... The only thing that I was doing most of the time that I would play the game is I would just, you know, just autoplay missions. Sometimes do a little bit of, you know, grinding in a new stage when events came out and all that. You get, you know, resources to unlock characters and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, so I just sort of... Sometimes I would, like, refine the same map a little bit more to make a more elegant solution. Because, yeah, I guess that's sort of what it comes down to in my mind. I sort of think in terms of, I need to come up with a single perfect solution in which all of my units, like none of my units ever need to be changed out or never get defeated. But again, 
Now, it's definitely not the best way to play the game, I don't think. And it's not universally applicable. So, yeah, getting out of that, thinking outside of that particular box has been something of a struggle for me, but it's something that I'm picking up over time. But yes. With that, though... We are getting to the end of my time here for the night. So yes, thank you for dropping by. Thank you for your thoughts. I really do appreciate it. And again, I'm trying to, to learn <coughs> to improve upon my skills. And again, I appreciate you uh, giving hints, and I appreciate you uh, asking as well. Because, yeah, again, I don't mind uh, some guidance, but I don't always, you know, want guidance. Or at least not on every, uh, in every aspect at all times. But yes. So again, thank you for being thoughtful in that way. So yes. Anyway, now it is time to wrap up. If anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a target on my own. Yes. Bye, chat. Indeed. But yes, before you go, though, if you would like to stick around for a little while, I am going to talk about the schedule. So yes, so most likely we'll be streaming again on Friday, this upcoming Friday at 9 p.m. Central Time. Oh, thank you for the follow as well. So yes, we will most likely be streaming again on Friday, 9 p.m. Central Time. So yes, and then, yeah, that will be most likely the only other stream for this week. It's the only other one that I have planned for this week anyway. But yes. Next week, we should be back to, or we should be, you know, continuing Arknights. Yeah, I should mention that the Friday stream will also be an Arknights stream. But yes, we should be seeing some more Arknights next Wednesday. But, ideally, next Wednesday, or next Friday, we'll be doing the once a, or once every two weeks collab with Sheppy Sheps, where, where we'll be playing some more Coffee Talk, and then, ideally, moving on to our next collab game. But yeah, once again, if you have any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. Give you a second, if, you, if you'd like. You don't have to, if you don't want to, of course. That's it. So yeah, next Wednesday, I'm planning to start a little bit earlier. We're closer to 8.30 p.m., if at all possible. chat suggestion or no raid suggestions at this point i think i'm going to go and visit uh chibi also chibi vt yes a c cat healer vtuber playing some uh octodad dadliest catch it would seem yes so let's set this raid up chibi vt all right so, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you'll continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.